Matthew Marsden, he is an actor. He was uh, in Reacher. He actually plays Reacher's father in the show, uh, obviously in flashbacks, because him and <laughs> I don't know how far apart him and uh, Alan Richson are in age, but they're not that far apart. Have you seen him yeah. in other things? I know he was yeah. in Rambo. Yeah, um, um, I remember him from an episode of CSI. My like, I saw a screenshot <laughs> of it, and I remember that episode specifically. Just that, yeah, that like that episode, that character. So uh, basically, he's going off on uh, on COVID restrictions that are still affecting Hollywood. Well, he's yep. extremely outspoken on Twitter, and that's how I knew of him actually. Um, but he started talking about this in more detail because he was denied a job recently for his vaccination status, he is not vaccinated. So here's his tweet. One of the reasons I spoke out on Twitter is because I saw that people felt like they didn't have a say. I'm aware of the risks involved and I appreciate the DM supporting me. I lost a job last week because I am unvaccinated and I will not lie about it. If more people stood up in Hollywood or any other profession and said no, then these vaccine mandates would have gone away. It's the same on Twitter. The trolls know they can push you around. It's never going to end. No one forces you to post politically. Your choice. So I think it's it's cool that he points out if you're a celebrity, if you have a platform and you want to post about politics, whether you are on the right or the left, it's to. ultimately your choice. You can be silent on it if you want. I mean, what? That's, I don't know. Like, I don't. There's no. But nothing. like also think about it from like a Gina Carano's perspective it feels away. like you're you're getting compelled to say certain things also she's she's like going off right now on twitter supporting him yeah uh, on twitter but what's It'd be funny cool to see them like do something together it's also what's funny about this is like other than the fact that i post memes from the babylon b i i try to post stuff that's almost entirely apolitical because i find the political stuff is boring like as far as like like there's nothing I, I've come to really hate when you read articles that have nothing to do with politics and then somebody just says thanks Biden or or they, you know like I mean it was the same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that to you all the well, time. Well, it's just it's just boring. It's you boring. know, it falls like, flat, and that's not actual humor. No, and, and it's those, not clever. It doesn't take any effort to just throw things out there like that. And it just ends up in everything in, in articles that have nothing to do with it. And w what I found here with actors like this is like he didn't have to. I appreciate that he did, but what I find really funny is that Hollywood is an industry of intense conformity, meaning that this is long before vaccination status was a thing. I also love how that's becoming a thing where it's like it is becoming the scarlet your letter A. What's your, your status? status? Yeah. Um, Everyone it, has one. It's also a, funny because it's probably the same industry where like tons of people were like, I'm not going to boycott my kids against the measles or whatever. And now they're like, but the COVID Or one. it used to be all crunchy like that. Granola. And then they, yeah. they flipped on a dime. Well, yeah, immediately. Like, I'm sure Gwyneth Paltrow has had every booster. Um, so, so it's like you said, the, the hardest part about this is that everyone has to stand up. And that's very easy for the actors with a lot of extra income, you know, homes, multiple homes. They've made a lot of money in their time. It's very easy for them to stand on principle. It's very hard for somebody who is a working, you know, episode to episode guest star on television shows who doesn't know where the next paycheck is going to come from. Or even more so, the cat, the crew who don't live ex uh, extravagant lifestyles. Who and are more are subject, replaceable than the people who go on exactly, screen. Exactly. And are subject to the same union. Uh, the same uniza unionization rules that are stifling their ability yeah. to have any type of freedom in this market. Even I, after the Screen Actors Guild president uh, has spoken yeah. out against these mandates, which we've already covered, she, this is somehow still going on in Hollywood. Yeah. You're getting ousted from getting a job in this industry. Yeah, but the Screen Actors Guild's president is what, Julia, what's Fr her face? Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher, who could have spoken out earlier, right? She right. spoke out like, a year and a half into it she, but mean, she was only she had only been president for like less than a year like a year by the time she did yeah and, like and she year, was a using year. the That's occasion of disney studios yes. in the u.s yeah, ending the their mandates part, yeah. to comment on it and given that even disney has capitulated on this issue it's so late in the game we're almost in 2023 and they're still people playing are COVID. still Look, yeah they're still playing this game People are still losing livelihood off of this. Look, I'm gonna, this, is, this is a similar argument to what we hear about like conservatives in Hollywood, right? Uh, Marsden saying that if more people would just be honest about the fact that they are not vaccinated, which you can infer means that there are 
people who are lying. working in the industry who are lying, who maybe have false back cards, whatever, yep. they are faking being vaccinated because they actually didn't want to and they're lying about it yep. when if they presented mm -hmm. as a united front, they would have more sway. We are this past similar, the age of united fronts, guys. This well, is similar to the arguments that we hear about uh, people who are Christian, they behind closed doors, they're actors who are very devout, but publicly they won't be honest about their faith or the way they vote. There are actors who are conservative that's, that's that, vote, yeah, this, who this won't is the be honest part. about it. Like this is the same cowardice. And what that tells you is this is a completely dominated industry, right? Yes. Like Long it's an COVID. occupied state. So in some ways, I know you guys already mentioned Gina Carano, like what I think is going to happen is that you're just going to see the film industry break off yeah, and already, i said this it's already yeah, happening right i think that's going to become more and more prevalent because they are boxing out people who literally can't work there because they're not vaccinated so of course you'll have a surplus of not just actors but to your point cameramen sound stage people set designers whatever who have the talent and the skills and the credentials who are now looking for work this is the opportunity for another i mean no daily caller or daily wire does this but like yeah. another industry to be built up here's here's my because problem because you mentioned that uh the daily wire i wanted to read what Gina Carano said in response yep. to Matthew Marsden. She said, they're trying to make the people who did not conform suffer as much as possible while everyone knows it's wrong but remain silent. I deeply admire the people who won't resort to a fake vaccine card or hide behind a special privilege while the rest of us sacrifice it all. And she has this whole thread going off about this issue. But um, it's, it's an interesting question about the ethics of faking your vaccination status in order to get a job. It maybe if that is your means of survival, uh, you can justify that ethically. And it's very easy for people with wealth, income, and ex in, in the cushy in, in the cushy yes. extra income to say that. It's this a reminded lot harder. me of like Letitia Wright, yeah. which this whole situation of Letitia Wright talking about mandates was kind of memory hold before Wakanda Forever came out, mm -hmm. but. She did speak out against these mandates. She did not want to get the vaccine. We never got a yes or a no answer on whether she did end up capitulating to them. And I can't help but wonder, did Letitia Wright fake her vaccine status to continue filming I Wakanda think, Forever? I think they would have made a big it, deal When you're about, at that level, when you are now would, ascended to an A-lister status as she has been, you can kind of get away with that. Well, yeah. Plus, it's like uh, it's like with um, Wednesday Adams and just filming. They film the scene because they have to because there's literally so much money riding on. Yeah, this well, thing Jenna Ortega is COVID positive. Yes. So uh, with with uh, Letitia Wright, you fake it because look, we made this movie's costing us two hundred and fifty million dollars. Every time she misses a day of work, we are out hundreds of thousands of dollars. We cannot afford to do that. I want yeah. to go through a little bit here uh, with what Fran Drescher said, because remember guys, we are going into 2023 and they're surveying members about industry COVID vaccination mandates. And like you said, I I'm kind of with you here, Hannah Claire, like she's very clearly trying to play the political middle line here where she, she sh supports the idea of these people not having to have these requirements, but at the same time, she's like, but I'm going to leave it to a, a survey. So she says, uh, the survey here also asks how familiar members are with sag after development of COVID-19 safety protocols and policies that they have created a safer workplace during a global pandemic. Fran Drescher has asked for the survey in the current issue of the sag after magazine. She wrote, I continue to fight on behalf of our members who felt who feel discriminated against because of covid unvaccinated or unboosted status which is keeping them from working in major studio productions for those members not being fairly considered by studios with regards to their religious or health exemptions help is on the way as a result of this lingering policy many performers have lost their representation their medical benefits and their livelihoods we want to take the pulse of the entire member body on this issue and many more so watch for the national sag after survey and answer all the questions to help our national board represent you help us decide whether you should or should not uh allow your fellow actors actresses and members of of the crew to just lose their livelihood lose their medical insurance and lose everything because they think differently than you about a medical procedure which is supposed to be inherently as it has always been before between you and a doctor not between you and an actor's guild, not between you and a producer, not between you and the people who pay your uh, pay you your paychecks, you and a medical professional. So 
it's like she wants she wants to seem like she's supporting them while at the same time being like, hey, what am I supposed to do? I'm just leaving it up to them. Yeah, which is why I think that consumers need to take the the upper hand here, try to have as much control as they can. Yeah. That's why I wish, you know, Matthew Marsden would reveal what production it was that told him he couldn't work on their set yeah. because of his vaccination status so that Not audiences can take at least a little bit of control and if they disagree with this they can at least boycott and speak out against it rather than it just being behind the curtain yeah you know i, I think that there are other health and safety risks on hollywood sets that are not talked about that are hidden from yeah. public view and public discussion rampant drug use alcohol abuse there are minors and adults working in close proximity to each other in some cases getting choreographed to film intimate scenes with each other uh getting scripted you know there as we've covered you know girls under the age of 18 getting scripted into adult scenes with men decades older than them in House of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. There are mentally unstable and aggressive directors like David O. Russell who have been recorded assaulting production assistants. There are cases where stunt actors get killed or mistreated. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, Hollywood is just not willing to face the reckoning for their own sins and they only want to point the finger at the outside. Uh, and that will go on forever because, and, and to be fair, we're part of that problem because we still consume the media. We still are, we are still a part of the problem. We're, we're always like wrestling with that. I are will, we part of the problem? We are. Are we, we are, though? We, yeah, I, I do like, there's plenty of stuff that I still watch that I don't talk about on reviews here that makes me part of the problem. I, I can, fully, yeah, and I like, can freely there's, that. it's a occupational hazard for you guys because like you have to pay for the tickets or the streaming surface that mm. condone certain behaviors to be able to do your job. On the other hand, like if we only silo ourselves into watching, you know, content by certain yeah. companies, then you would be not a very topical or relevant pop culture show. Mm -hmm. So it's finding the balance, like finding ways to engage with uh, companies that have your val values, both in your capacity as professionals, but also as a consumer while still like, not necessarily ostracizing yourself to the other side of the world. I, I want to tell this one other story about an actor named Richard uh, Berge, uh, who from uh, he was on like The Young and the Restless. He was on a bunch of different soap operas. And this is an old story, so it's not relevant, uh, recent, but I want to point it out because of how ridiculous when you hear like why he got fired because he didn't, it's not like he went unvaccinated. Like it says okay. this. So it says, he says, I feel ter about it. He's, uh, terrible about it, Bergie said in his message. I still do. It bothers me mightily, but it is what it is. I respect whatever the show's decision is. They're doing their best, uh, the best they can. We all are. And he explains here, he says, he tested positive for COVID around Christmas time and waited to return to set after five days, a time frame the Centers for Disease Control set at the end of December. The actor then tw tested twice negatively at the studio and showed up to work. Uh, he said, but was within, uh, which was not within the show's guidelines, which was a 10 day protocol. So I inadvertently violated the show's COVID protocols. So he went in five days rather than 10 and they fired him. Five days he went in, after like, getting infected? After testing negative. After testing negative? Uh, he, he went in and they no fired way. him. Because he didn't wait the extra five days. And imagine, like, think about this. That's insane. This is, this is like a dude who, like, likely just loves his job. Like, he's, like, he's been an actor for, like, I can think of, like, 15 things he's been in. This dude's got money. He yeah, and this need... is, like, so far from a political yeah. difference. Yes. It's insane that they would even read into it like it was his intent See, to disrespect. The other part is, like, had he been someone they decided was more valuable to right. their production, they would have let it slide, right? Were they like, just looking... This sounds like they were looking for some excuse to boot him from the project anyway. And they or, were just like, oh, you, uh, even if they're not, you didn't go by the books here. Or even if they're not looking to boot him specifically, they are willing to virtue use him to virtue signal that they are complying, right? Or like, like scare other employees mm -hmm. into compliance also, like with his example. he is example. disposable enough that they can be yeah. like, look, we are sticking by the protocol. Also, we all know that like now, uh, every time somebody references it back, the CDC is like, hey, that was just a recommendation. <laughs> like, it's not our fault. <laughs> it was a recommendation, not a rule. Yeah, well, that's like the crazy it's, thing. Yeah, the crazy thing is like all these protocols in Hollywood are privately enforced. Yep. They have nothing to do with You can get rid of them with... anytime you want. 
the I think the biggest wake up for me was like when I was coming back out here last year after we were in Austin and I realized that all of the signs on the on the thank you uh, all of the signs that were on the air, at the airport like on the walls all had like Purell sponsored by Purell on them like how what? dystopian is that? Like all Somebody of the things stood that, to like, make money off the pandemic. Yes. And if yeah. you don't recognize that you're not unable to, uh, to see why certain uh, uh, positions are still in effect, right? Like yeah. who benefits from you staying home and wearing a mask and getting a vaccine? Well, the producers of the vaccines, whoever's producing the content that you're watching at home and whoever is manufacturing the mask. Like it's not that hard to follow. It's just that at a certain point we're so numb to it that like we forget that actually Hollywood is still enforcing these mandates. And they're lagging behind the rest of society. Because nobody loves that. virtue signaling also, more like, than Hollywood. <laughs> it gives them an excuse to fire people they don't want yes, around, right? That's a huge right. part. Like a huge part of it is like they just want reasons to get rid of people. Yeah. And it's that makeshift. It's a way to flag anyone who yes. won't comply with a future mandate. I mean, you, you know? said it yourself. Like for Wednesday, it costs enough money to can't to postpone production if she was sick with COVID, right? Yeah. So then then the protocols didn't matter. Yeah. The protocols that are apparently life and death don't matter if we're going to lose money. Well, mm -hmm. that's But if kind Tim of Burton's favorite actress is sick with COVID, she has to do the scene because we have deadlines, people. Yes. Mm -hmm. like, but if you're, uh, but if so you're extra... Enforced. But if you're extra number two, kick rocks. Like yeah. you get, yeah. Also, the other thing here is like we talked about, it's a racket. There's people, there, there's COVID, uh, there's COVID protocol enforcement officers. There's testing facilities. There's all money. Getting paid. There's money to be made uh, uh, on this racket that will never go away. So I don't know if they get rid of it. I think they just keep it around. And I see all of these people on Twitter who are out here defending the decisions, the, the, yeah. all of these tyrannical decisions of these giant mega corporations like Disney, like actually spewing hatred at the individuals who are falling victim to, to these mega corporations and then claiming to be anti-establishment. Imagine thinking like, you're fighting the man. Matthew yeah. Marsden posted a screenshot of a DM that was sent to him by an anonymous person with pronouns in bio, of course. They said, conservatives and entertainment aren't being canceled. They're just not talented. You're comparing <laughs> a bunch of A-list actors to people who couldn't even make the D-list. Also, nobody wants to hire a racist, homophobic, conspiracy-spouting piece of S. <laughs> so you, what you're saying is they didn't want him there initially. But so you're admitting that him. they were looking for an excuse yep. to get rid of you and use your medical status as a way to do that. And a lot of it is just these people are just really, really authoritarian and love the idea of like even hey, if I'm it's cool just with that. even if it's just moral enforcement, meaning that they want to guilt you into following complying to what they want through your own like your own self censorship. Yeah, but like a lot of good authoritarian dictatorships, the rules don't apply to them, right? Yep. This person just sent in like. Well, it shouldn't matter for A-list actors. Like, it yeah. should only matter for people who need the work more to be in their chosen profession, yeah. right? Also, what do you have to say about what Marsden said? He says, men have been emasculated so much over the past few years. They have been taught uh, that to stand up for something you believe in is toxic masculinity. It starts in school where boys are expected to behave like girls. Women have stepped up because uh, they are protecting their kids. Even that is like, yes, they have, but not to the same. There's far more like... COVID like obsessed women uh, and men oh, out yeah. there like that love the pandemic. COVID really showed that um, women need healthy outlets for their neuroticism and Parental. desire for, yeah, like maternal control. Sublimating. And, yeah, yeah, like this is not one of those outlets. Nope. <laughs> um, there was the, did you see the, th what, did we talk about it on here or did me and you just talk about it off air about the lady who was like, my son wanted to go to a birthday party and I had to say no. And I like, saw that. I had oh to say gosh. no because it, it was, was like, an indoor play well, place. It's just not safe right now. And here's the thing. Someone, and the person who shared it was like, this was yesterday. You yeah. No, it was. <laughs> and here's the thing. You read it and you just know that she did not feel bad saying no. She loved saying no. She embraced saying no. Keeping her kids like nervous erotically close and not allowing them to like laugh love live laugh love have fun do anything those are the people well, okay. with the live laugh love signs yes. in their house i'll yes. go one step further and say like i would wage your guess that this mom also is telling her her kid no we can't have your friends over for a birthday party because nope. of the yep. pandemic like she is 
keeping this kid from integrating with his community and also preventing him from mm -hmm. building community from growing. his own. Of course, you know Hollywood growing. loves an excuse to not socially interact with anyone not of their class. Normal. Of course, well, they all... enjoy a way that they can isolate the elites from those below them. Well, yep. it's also like the people from each other, right? Like this woman took to Twitter immediately to to say like I had to tell my son this thing like that's your first first way of dealing with this right like yep. did you ask the other I mean like maybe she did I shouldn't like totally box her in here but like did she ask the other parent like hey can our kids play at a playground together in the open air because I'm afraid of COVID like are you supporting your children or are you supporting the government agenda thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.